Hello, everybody. This is Tom Eckert here. You're listening to my podcast, Numerology, a GPS for the soul. This is your place to learn about the true power of numerology and how to use it to bring out the best in yourself, understand your loved ones better, take wise decisions, and prepare for your future. In other words, how to live your life aligned with your true destiny. Take your time to educate yourself and share these podcasts with your friends and family so they too can enjoy the great benefits of numerology. Enjoy! Hello and welcome to all my listeners. I am so happy, as always, to record yet another episode in this ongoing podcast. For those of you who are new here, we discuss here numerology as a path for inner transformation, for inner growth, and for self-understanding. So my attempt is to always take numerology in a direction of in-depth studies and to make it accessible and applicable for everyday life matters. So numerology, but in a grounded way. Now, if you have never never gotten a numerology reading, uh, you are welcome to contact me through my website link. If you want to study numerology in a more methodical and self-paced way, I recommend you check out my self-study course. And if your dream is to become a professional numerologist, you can study one-on-one with me. And all the info is on my website, and the link is provided in the episode description. Now, one last thing before we jump right into today's topic. There is a secret episode in this podcast. I won't tell you which one it is. And this secret episode holds a coupon that is exclusive only to you, my podcast listeners. And it includes a 65% discount for my online self-study numerology course. So simply go through my different podcasts, listen to them and discover which episode it is and make use of this coupon. Okay, my dears. So let's jump right into today's topic. Today is a very fascinating one. I'm sure many of you will connect um, because we are going to talk about karmic debts, right? So very often when I teach numerology, uh, one of the most um, one of the topics that people are most attracted to are either master numbers or karmic debt numbers. Now, of course, as always, uh, as with master numbers, there are many misunderstandings uh, as to the nature of karmic debt numbers. And today, hopefully, we will bring some more clarity into this matter. So, karmic debts. Uh, by and large, are, as the name suggests, some kind of debt. But from the perspective of numerology, we're talking about a debt that is not from this lifetime. In other words, we are talking about unfinished business from previous lifetimes. But we're basically, we're ba- what we're basically saying, you know, all of us have unfinished business, right? I mean, none of us is perfect, Surely we have not done everything correctly, if one can, you know, say correctly about something. But, um, you know, basically what we're saying with karmic debts is that something, it's something we've done in an imbalanced way, probably repeatedly and repeatedly, maybe more than one lifetime, that created damage or harm to someone else or maybe to many others. And as a result of this imbalance, as a result of this kind of uh, leftover damage that we left behind us, simply as the rule of justice, the rule of the universe goes, we need to balance these tendencies in this lifetime. And that's basically the role, we can say, or at least one angle to understand the role of a karmic debt, right? So um, we want to balance something. But it's important to understand that it's not just balancing. It's not like I have done something wrong and now I'm punished or now I need to correct it. No, it's 
the whole thing, even doing something imbalanced, is part of an evolutionary journey of the soul in order to reach greater self-understanding, greater self-knowledge and refinement. However, it's important to um, understand the experience of a karmic debt number. On the one hand, as I always try to do, because, you know, my focus is wisdom, and wisdom always includes both sides of the coin. It's paradoxical. It includes um, positive and negative at once, and something that's beyond both. So we have to talk about, like, a karmic debt from the perspective of a lesson, right? A positive evolutionary lesson, but at the same time, we don't want to discount the fact that it is difficult and it is challenging. So we'll talk about both. Now, if you are born with a karmic debt number in one of your five core numbers, okay, but especially if you're born with one in your uh, life path number, your expression number, or your soul urge number, then you are going to experience the effects of this karmic debt number stronger than other people who don't have it in such central locations. Basically, the experience is like, it's as if, like an image of, of it, you can imagine it like starting with an overdraft, okay? You're, you're like, you have like this overdraft in the bank, and you have to work harder than others to reach balance um, with that, or in that specific field that the number represents. Another way you can imagine it is that your road is a bit more of an uphill road, until you manage to find the balance in that specific field that the number represents. Um, so, yes, there is a learning curve here, and yes, it is challenging, and yes, there are recurring events that you will experience as someone who has a karmic debt in such a central location in your numerology chart. Now, we will talk about some of these events and what are the karmic debt numbers, of course, don't worry about it, but more, more important than just talking about the numbers, which you can just you know click on the internet and find in a second, I want to give you a deeper understanding of what they actually are, and that's the focus of this episode. So... It's important to understand that the experience, somebody who has karmic debt, a karmic debt or karmic debts, um, the experience is oftentimes accompanied with a sense of being flawed, okay? Very often people will struggle like as if something is not okay about them. Um, certain areas of their life, specific, let's say, um, specific, if, if your karmic debt is... Uh, located in a specific location in your chart, very often that location, if it's the soul urge or if it's the expression number or if it's the life path, that specific location is going to feel more compromised, harder to access at times. Sometimes there's going to be a lack of trust in that uh, area of your life. And you're going to experience recurring events that are a little bit challenging or... Um, more difficult in that specific area. Um, very often, it's also going to be uh, accompanied by the feeling of victimhood. So it's like a feeling like as if life is unfair to me, okay? Now, it's, it's important, as I said, to understand the nature and the effects of the karmic debt numbers before we just, you know, talk about, okay, this number means this, this number means that, because it won't really, really tell you the deeper meaning of what it means to have a karmic debt. And as I said, this podcast, at least, is about in-depth numerology. It's about maturing, growing up, using numerology to really understand, you know, the experience and the life lesson of, of, of having such a number in your path. Now, many people, when they see a karmic debt number, think it is a bad sign, um, Exactly. Um, it's the same mistake that people do with master numbers where they think that having a master number is a sign that it is something good. Uh, both are wrong. Um, bad and good don't really apply from the soul's perspective. 
Uh, from the soul's perspective, it is all good because, well, it is all meant to bring us into fuller and fuller fruition, fuller growth and wholeness. So every experience, whether it's very expanding or contracting, difficult or pleasant, in, 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 the, in the bigger p- picture perspective, is simply meant to bring us into greater wholeness and growth. S- having said that, I'm, I'm definitely not denying um, the challenging feeling of it and the fact that it is very often uncomfortable. Okay, so no denial of that, but there's a very big difference between saying something is uncomfortable and saying, something is bad. Uncomfortable? Okay. Many things are uncomfortable. Also, going to the gym and developing your muscles can be very uncomfortable. Um, Also, studying something that you really, really love very often can be uncomfortable. Uh, Also, you know, being pregnant can be uncomfortable. But is it bad? No, it's not bad. Very often, it can be something really amazing, actually. Now, um, It is important to understand that having a karmic debt will will necessarily bring about recurring, uncomfortable, and apparently unexplainable events into your life. And that's simply part of the predicament um, of having a karmic debt in your chart. And the type of, you know, recurring events is going to be reflected by the specific karmic debt that you embody. And these recurring events are going to come again and again in order to help you uh, confront and master this specific unfinished business that we mentioned from previous lifetimes. So now, after having said all of that, let me just shortly um, say what are the karmic debt numbers, although I'm sure that most of my listeners are already aware of them. And still, the karmic debt numbers that Western numerologists agree on are 13, 4, 14, 5, 16, 7, and 19, 1. Now, many people have asked me and continue to ask me, hey, Tom, like, why these specific numbers? Why not, I don't know, uh, 15-6 or any other number, right? Why are only like 4, 5, 7, and 1 are the ones who are um, who have a karmic debt associated with them? And my honest answer to you is, I don't know. This is a very ancient system. I do not know um, why these numbers are specifically considered karmic debt numbers. But somehow, after giving so many readings to people, it really works. When these numbers um, hit the fan, when this is the energy that really kind of um, kicks in and becomes active in our life, whether through our um, core numbers or our period cycles, the effect is simply undeniable. There are other numbers that also tend to have more imbalanced effects, uh, but I'm not going to enter... Uh, into that topic in this episode. Those of you who who want to go deeper and deeper, you're most welcome, as I already said in the beginning, to contact me about in-depth numerology studies with me. I'll take you into g- much greater depths. Now, let's say a couple more words about each karmic debt number. So you have like just an overview. Again, this is not an in-depth episode about each karmic debt number. Perhaps this will come in the future. I did already create, by the way, an in-depth episode about 16.7. So if you didn't listen to it yet, I really recommend you do so after listening to this episode because you're going to get, get a much fuller picture of the experience of having a karmic debt number. Now, maybe in the future, I'm going to do about the other ones as well. Um, and by the way, um, there's a, I'm going to post a question at the end of this episode, um, not like not a um, recorded question, but a written question for those of you listening through Spotify. And I would really appreciate to to hear your answers. Um, that just helps me, you know, communicate with you and know uh, how you feel about the episode and and um, hear any ideas. Okay, so thirteen four. 
13.4 basically says that in previous lifetimes, we have been irresponsible. We have used, or uh, more correctly, we've misused our freedom in selfish ways. And other people had to carry the burden, had to pay the price for our selfish misuse of our position. Maybe I've been, I don't know, a famous actor and I just, I don't know, um, lived on others' behalf. Maybe I didn't like somebody's, I don't know, <laughs> um, grocery store and I, I, I said something in public about it and ruined their business. I just had fun being, you know, in my position of fame, having the capacity to say whatever I want to say because I can say it and just misuse my freedom, right? And my self, and I was kind of selfish in my actions. And somebody else had to carry the burden. Again, only one example. I just wanted to get the feeling of it, okay? 14.5. The 14.5 karmic debt, the, the story behind it is that in a previous lifetime or previous lifetimes, I've experienced a great limitation on my personal freedom. Now, this can uh, be uh, having lived in a totalitarian regime, maybe in a time of war, um, perhaps even being in prison or being born into some kind of religious, more uh, conservative family or culture where I was not allowed, you know, to experience my freedom. And, right, there was a lot of suffocation on that life force, um, right? So I'm coming into this lifetime with this feeling that I have to learn what freedom really is. I need to break some shackles. With a 16-7, uh, the 16-7 has to do with ruining something on the level of the heart with another person or other people, breaking people's heart, breaking something on, on, on really like the deepest heart level with another person. Uh, this can be, you know, turning your back at someone, abandoning someone suddenly, uh, betraying someone all of a sudden, right? So it not necessarily by the way out of ill intent, but that's simply something that has been done. And as a result, in this lifetime, I have to correct matters of the heart. And then last but not least, we have the 19-1. And the 19-1 has to do with uh, previous lifetimes in which I simply misused my power. I had a power position. I was in a power position. This can be a politician or a rich person or, I don't know, a military, you know, high degree, whatever, high rank, sorry, high rank, military position, whatever, a uh, dictator, but somebody with power and simply misusing my power for selfish needs, abusing it, abusing others, um, right? So abuse of power, period. And in this lifetime, naturally, I need to balance the topic of number one, right? Um, using my will, using my power, using my individual authority, using my individual autonomy, and so on and so forth. So now we have kind of a picture of what each karmic debt number is. By and large, just kind of a few words to give you the feeling of it. We already understand that um, this is some kind of unfinished business that I have to balance in this lifetime. We understand that there are recurring experiences that I will feel and have to go through again and again in order to refine that lesson. So a couple last points. Eventually, karmic debts can become a gift. And that might come to you as a surprise. But yes, that's really, really the way it is. Um, it just takes a lengthy and committed self-work and the willingness to grow. So if we do the work consistently with love, with patience, and accept, you know, that's our path, then these karmic debts, you know, they can really humble us and polish us and help us eventually to teach a deeper lesson about the specific number that is ours to master.
So if I am a 14.5 or a 16.7 that, you know, that really works on himself or herself, eventually I can become a kind of role model for a very, very refined five or seven. You know, a 14.5 can become an example, a role model of, of, of a very responsible and mature expression of true freedom. A 16-7 can become a beautiful role model of a humble and sharp expression of spiritual wisdom and depth. So, after having said all of that, I want you to remember that having a karmic debt or having many karmic debts might be challenging. I'm not denying that. But, It is not bad, and it is not a mistake. Challenges are part of the natural fabric of soul evolution and spiritual growth. So simply learn to accept your challenge, to embrace it as part of your journey. Accept it as it is, and learn to grow from it and refine yourself more and more. That's the name of the game. So I would really love to hear more about your experience with numerology. And that's, as I already mentioned, that's why I started posting questions in my episodes. At the moment, these are only visible for those of you listening through Spotify. And I'd really, really love to read your answers and learn more about you, my beloved listeners. So please, just take a moment, go ahead and share your answers. I'm super curious and it'll help me create better episodes for you. And just to remind you, if you wish to get a numerology reading, contact me through my website link. And if you want to study numerology in a more methodical and self-paced way, I suggest you check out my self-study course. Remember, there's a secret episode in my podcasts that gives you a coupon exclusive only to my podcast listeners with a 65% off discount for this course. So just check it out. And of course, if you have a dream to become a professional numerologist, then you should consider the one-on-one studies with me. And again, you can find more information on my website. The link is provided in the description of the podcast. Okay, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next ones. All the best. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you did and you want to go deeper into numerology, check out my website, tom-eckert.com. You can also book a numerology reading or even study numerology yourself through my courses. I'll see you in the next episode.